Hey everyone, I'm running a few minutes behind, so let me get our group pulled up real quick. Um, and if you're here, say hello in the comments, and I'll get my phone hooked up where it belongs. So, get my volume turned off. Although I know Facebook will probably turn it right back on. It seems like it always does. Let me get my phone connected over here, out of our way. Okay, hang on. All right, happy Monday. There I am. Turn that off. Now I can see comments. Okay, perfect. Let me get my mouse out of the way. Oh, I'm running around scrambling tonight. So I thought I would come in this group at seven. I had put a poll out last week and um, I'm going to let it run uh, to the end of this week, but right now, uh, Monday nights at 7 seems to be in the lead, so I thought I would jump in here tonight and do a little tutorial for you. So, we are going to make a hot chocolate, because I know I put a message out there asking you if you knew what um, hot chocolate and Plaster of Paris and resin had in common, so I'm going to show you tonight. Uh, what they have in common. So let me get some of my stuff moved out of our way and then we will get started. So, and I was running around trying to find my marshmallows and uh, I got too organized and now I can't find them. So I'm not quite sure where they are, but I will add them once I find them. So, but anyway, we'll get to that. So let's get started. So what you're gonna need is, um, I'm just using the DAP Turn it this way. <laughs> Dat Plaster Paris. I'm using the Amazing Clear Cast Resin. That's the A and the B that we mix together. And I'm using um, Apple Barrels uh, Brown in real brown. That's the color. Uh, you're going to need a mug. I'm putting mine in this little red mug for Christmas, for the holidays. And you will need a straw. And there's my piping bag. I've already got my whipped cream, my icing that I'm going to use for whipped cream already made up in the bag. Um, so it's ready to go and I'm using the 1M um, uh, piping tip. And then I think that's it. Let me grab some gloves. And if you join us, um, just say hello in the comments and then I'll be able to uh, say hello back. So, and if you're watching this on replay, then just put hashtag replay, and then um, later on I can come in and say hello to you as well. So, hey Elizabeth, nice to see you. So tonight we're going to be making hot cocoa or hot chocolate, um, and we're going to be using uh, plaster of Paris, and we're going to be using resin. So we're going to uh, kind of combine them and use them both. Hey Wendy, nice to see you. So, let me grab my gloves. Um, and we'll get started. Let me move my mouse out of the way. I need my scale. And I'll put a supply list at the, um, not at the end of the tutorial, but I'll post it separately for you guys. Um, so whenever you're working with resin, um, always make sure you're protecting yourself, whether that's wearing gloves or eyewear. Um, I'm just gonna do the gloves for this one tonight. And let me grab um, I need a couple sticks, popsicle sticks, and um, and we'll get started. So, first thing we're going to do is, um, I'm going to fill, so here's, I have one started for you guys. So here's uh, what it looks like right now. And this is a mixture of the Plaster of Paris and the resin. And that's what we're going to mix up tonight. And we're going to put it in this empty one. And then we'll switch and we'll come back to this one that's cured and we'll decorate it. So, okay. So first thing we need is, I don't need this just yet, sorry for all that noise. Okay, so I've got my kitchen scale, so I'm going to turn that on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out my ingredients and then I'm going to mix them up. So first thing I'm going to do is put my little cup on the scale. We're going to zero that out and let me scooch that a little bit. I want to make sure it's not in your way. And I'll move it off to the side once we get going so that it's not in your way. Alrighty, so got, <laughs> got too many things in here. Okay, so um, I have this little scoop that I use. Um, tonight I'm, I'm weighing it out. So we're measuring um, 
ounces, so it doesn't matter. But typically, I just keep a little scoop in here, and it's just handy for when I'm using Plaster of Paris. So I'm going to put a couple scoops, and then we'll see. So always um, uh, zero out your scale so you're not weighing the container that it's in. And also, Plaster of Paris is very lightweight, so you want to make sure and kind of tap it down. Um, when you're weighing it so that um, you get the, not the actual, but I guess the actual measurement. So I want to make sure right now um, I'm going to be doing um, five ounces of resin and three ounces of the plaster of Paris. And we're not using water. So I need to make sure that you guys know that. So what you want to do is uh, whatever cup or mug you're going to use, make sure that you wash and dry it thoroughly and that there's no water left in it. So you want to make sure this is really good and dry on the inside. We don't want to mix any water. I know normally when we're using Plaster of Paris, it's the two parts Plaster of Paris um, and then the water uh, ratio. And tonight we're not. We're not using any water. We're going to be using the um, resin instead. So, all right, so I'm going to snap that on. This is three ounces. Set that aside. Let me put this down below here. Keep it out of your way. Okay. And then um, we are going to switch cups. A couple big ones. So I'm going to go to the big cup. I'm going to zero it out because I'm going to put um, the A resin in the larger cup. And then we're going to add our colorant into that. Because we're doing the um, hot chocolate or hot cocoa, I'm using the acrylic paint. And we're just using the um, apple barrel and the real brown for tonight. If I was going to be doing like a transparent uh, product where I wanted the resin to look transparent, I would use a resin colorant instead of using um, the acrylic paint. But because I want it to have this solid chocolate look to it, we're going to use the acrylic paint. So, okay. So, and then I want five ounces of resin. So what we're going to do is do two and a half ounces of each. And I have it zeroed out. So um, the A is a lot thicker. So I don't know if you've worked with resin before, but the A is thicker, kind of comes out slower. And then when you do go over to the B, it comes out, it's a little bit thinner. So it'll come out a little bit quicker. So you just want to watch your scale because even though we're adding the paint and we're adding the plaster of Paris, we still need the exact ratio of um, A and of B in order for the chemical reaction to do what it's supposed to. So almost there. So oh, there we go. And I don't have a fan on, but this is very wispy. <laughs> kind of funny. So um, I'm just using the DAP. So let me grab it back up here for you. So this is just the DAP plaster of Paris, and um, this is a four-pound little bucket is what I'm using. So um, you can get these at um like the heart like at lowe's lowe's has them um you can get them also they look like they're in milk cartons um and i just save that if the milk carton and like if i use the bucket up and then i just dump the milk carton it looks like a milk carton of plaster repairs and then um i just save the plastic container and then pour the milk carton container full of plaster paris into that one and then um just keep refilling my bucket so hopefully that helps but you can get them like michael's carries it hobby lobby carries it lowe's carries it so all the the typical craft stores will carry it um so it just depends on like how much you're wanting to purchase um okay so we have a here and then the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to use one ounce of the brown paint so i'm going to go ahead and um no i'm not let me get the the b first so it's going to be in a smaller cup so i know the difference um, so let me zero that out. Let's do the B real quick. I want to get all my stuff ready before I start mixing it. Because when you mix it with Plaster of Paris, it's a bit different than if you're just using resin. So again, this one comes out really quick. So you really want to watch your scale to make sure that you don't get, you know, too much. So I want two and a half ounces because I'm doing... Um, five ounces of the resin and it's two and a half of each which gives me the five okay perfect all right and then i'll put these aside because we don't need these either all right so there we go okay i had another one open but i forgot and didn't use it but that's okay i'm going to use them all up so let me set these aside for you guys get them out of our way okay so the large one is a and the little one is b so i'm going to switch I'm still using my scale. I'm going to zero it back out because I want one ounce of the acrylic paint. And I'm putting it in the A. So, and I'm just watching the scale. 
Oh wait, this is brand new. Need to open it. And I was gonna say I don't think I have a razor knife in here. Didn't know this wasn't open. Let's see. Oops, let me try this. With my gloves, it's not wanting to open. There. Ah. I don't want to take them off. Let me grab. Let me grab my scissors. I don't have. I don't really have a razor knife in here. I don't know what happened to it. I've lost it. <laughs> it's gone. So let me just kind of poke a little bit in here. There we go. And then let me grab. Here's a white. I don't want paint all over the scissors. I'm gonna do this. So, okay. Put that back over there. And then I'm gonna take this off all the way. I'll just put it in my little wipe. And I took my garbage out of here earlier, and so I don't have it. <laughs> so I need to put that back in here. Okay, now we're ready for this. So I'm just gonna set that in there out of the way. Okay, and we're gonna add one ounce to this, and I'm just measuring. I'm watching my scale. So then the next thing we're going to do, uh, you're right, and I don't need the scale anymore, so I'm going to switch and move my scale, but I'm going to grab this parchment just because I don't want to get it. So I have a um, silicone mat, but I'm going to put the parchment down because I don't want to get it on my silicone mat. So, okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a popsicle stick and we're just going to stir it up. So you're going to stir up the resin, which is A, in with the paint. And... Um, the thick, it changes really quickly, so it'll get really thick. Um, so you just want to give it a good stir, and then we're going to add the B, part B. I'm going to add that in here. And then I'm just going to use the same popsicle stick and just kind of make sure I get all that resin out of the cup. Then we're going to give this a good stir, and it gets very, um, it gets very sticky. I guess that's the best way to describe it. So, once you stir this up, it now has, you know, part A, part B, and the acrylic paint. Um, it's, it's well. First of all, this is really thick, and then once we add the plaster of Paris, it gets really sticky. Is what I meant to say. So, okay, so this is stirred up really well. You just want to make sure and scrape the bottom and the sides because once we add the plaster of Paris, it really starts setting up right away. You don't have a lot. It's not that you don't have a lot of work time, but it gets that's when it gets really sticky, and I will show you. So right now, it just kind of looks like melted. I don't want to hold over my stuff. Melted chocolate, if you can tell. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the plaster of Paris, and we're only going to do half of it, and then we're going to stir it, and then put in the other half, stir it, and then immediately put it into our cup. So. And when you do, there we go, a little bit more, okay, um, this is when it gets really sticky, and I'll show you what I mean in just a sec. So, I'm going to get it stirred, and you want to make sure that you get, um, especially when you put half the plaster of Paris, you want to make sure you get all that resin on the sides and the bottom um, during the first half you dump it in, because once you add the second, it just gets so sticky, it's hard to get to the bottom of the cup. So, okay. And we don't want to see that powder, so you just want to mix it in. It looks pretty good. And now I'm going to add the rest of it. And like I said, I'm just doing it in two, like half of it and then the second half. So I'm just going to stir this up. And it looks like this, if you can see it, while you're doing it. It's very, has a very different texture than if you were just using resin. And also if you were just using plaster of Paris, it's very, very different. But... It works, so we're going to go with it. Okay, so you just want to make sure and stir it up, get all that plaster Paris um, combined with the resin. And then, like I said, it's not curing, it's just very sticky. So when you go to put it in your cup, it doesn't pour out like plaster of Paris would or like resin would. You're really going to have to take your, I'm using a popsicle stick, you're going to have to take your popsicle stick and kind of pull it out of the cup and let it kind of land in your 
uh, whatever mug or cup you're going to use. And so my suggestion is, is when you do that, is try to keep it in the center because you don't want to get it all over the sides of the inside of that cup. All right, so I'm actually going to move that right now because it's kind of in the way. All right, so it's ready, and I'm getting ready to pour it in, which isn't really a pour. So what I'm going to do is just take the, um, and you can kind of see it. It's really thick, and it's sticky. I mean, that's the best way I can describe it. Um, so we're not going to worry about leveling it right away because it kind of self-levels itself. You just want to kind of scrape out as much as you can. It almost reminds me of Silly Putty, but it's not. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just going to scrape down the sides just like that. I'm going to pour it in. And if you do get some on the inside, don't worry about it. Um, once it's totally cured, you can come back like with a sharp razor knife and you can remove any excess that kind of gets on the sides. So I don't know if you can see all these strands, but it's like, it's like really sticky. I mean, that's the best way I can describe it. It kind of sticks to itself. Um, so what I do is I kind of press down in the center because we're going to do a dollop of whipped cream on the top. So I'm not concerned about like what the, the top of it looks like in the center because it's going to be hidden anyway. So, okay, so you just want to kind of, um, we don't like to waste resin, so you just really want to go on your cup and get as much out as you can. And what I find I do at the very end is just kind of scrape it on my cup and then try to get that last little bit out. And then you can see it's pretty much empty now um, compared to what it was. So, okay, so I'm just going to let the rest of this kind of drip off of my um popsicle stick and then there we go all right i'm gonna flip that aside i want to wipe my hands out a little bit on me so okay a little bit on the cup outside all right so then the next thing i like to do is just kind of tap it with my hand and then tap it on the table and then also just kind of give it like a little shake turn it this way and then what happens is it will kind of self-level like it will um kind of um as it cures it'll just kind of settle and that's where you're going to get the leveling out of it okay so just kind of um letting it tap down because it does have that plaster of paris and um you can get bubbles but i'm not worried about that because really it's hot chocolate so it's milk which has bubbles and then the chocolate so here's what this one looks like and it's kind of hard to see i don't want to tilt it too much because we want to keep it level so okay so pretty much that's all you need to do to this and then we're going to set it aside oh wendy thank you so much this is our um gingerbread theme i'm getting it set up so i still have some more <laughs> i still have another storage container that i'm got to go through with more gingerbread stuff so but thank you so much i love 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 gingerbread themes so um let me grab a sip of this <laughs> mm. thank you okay so we're going to let this set up and I would leave it for a good um, 24 hours to 48 hours before you come back and then you decorate the top just to make sure that um, that it's set up and that it's dry. So, OK, so we're going to go with this. And like I said, when I first started, <sighs> I've been getting organized and I've been putting things away and I put my marshmallows in a mason jar because, you know, how I am about my mason jars. I love them. And now I'm like, where did I put the marshmallows? I moved out my, um, we had the pumpkin theme up for last month in October. And I just this past weekend switched out my pumpkins for my um, gingerbread theme. And somehow I moved um, my chocolate chips and I moved my marshmallows and I don't know where they are. So anyway, I'm going to have to search for them because I don't know where those are. Um, and that's okay if I don't get them, but my goal is, is I wanted to put, um, the whipped cream on the top plus a straw and then add some marshmallows. And then I also have this, um, the tulip, the slick paint after the whipped cream dries, I'm just going to drizzle this on and it looks like just chocolate drizzle when you're done. So I have this and it'll be in your list, but I'm not going to be doing it tonight because I really want the whipped cream. Um, I like my whipped cream to cure before I do it just so that it, to me, it gives a prettier look and a better finished look. So anyway, so put that over there and we're just going to do like a little dollop of whipped cream. And, um, 
I already have this made up, so I'm not going to be making it up today. So this is just um, white, uh, the lightweight spackle with white um, acrylic paint and a little bit of flour. But I'm going to wipe the tip off because I want to have a nice little, pretty little dollop at the end. So, okay, sit that over there. And then I'm just going to set it down in the center. I'm not going to put a lot because I really want to see... Um, I mean, I'm going to put a lot, but I'm not going to put a lot to cover up that hot chocolate because I really want to see that. So, okay. And then put that back in there. And I just keep mine in a Ziploc baggie like this. If I'm going to be reusing it, um, I'll just put it in here and then it's convenient and it doesn't dry out, um, for when I need it for the next project. So, close that up. So. Okay, so I just put like the little tiny dollop because I still really want to see that hot chocolate around the edges. So, okay, and then I found in my massive drawer of straws, um, one of my Christmas straws. So we are going to, um, I usually like to do them around three to four inches. Um, and I'm going to put this in the whipped cream. So if you wanted, you could also put it in your... Um, in the resin plaster of paris mixture before it dries if you want to um i've just always done mine in the whipped cream so that's what i'm going to do so i'm just cutting mine in half so not even measuring it just kind of eyeballing it and then as i always tell you um always put the cut side down into your whipped cream so that way the manufacturer's cut looks so much prettier when it's on the outside so Okay, so I'm just going to put this into my whipped cream, just like that, and then <laughs> uh, once it dries, I'll add the, um, so this is what it looks like, a little plain right now, once I find my marshmallows, which I have no idea where they are, and they're probably like right in front of me, and I just can't see them, but they're little mini marshmallows, and um, let me look over here, because I moved so much stuff down here, anyway, once I get the, um, once I find my mini marshmallows, I'm going to put them on top and then I'm going to drizzle the chocolate and then I'll come back in our group and I will post a picture of it for you. So, but anyway, that's all I had for you tonight. I just wanted to kind of pop on here really quick um, for just a short and sweet little tutorial just to kind of show you. Um, you also can, if you don't want to do a chocolate drizzle, you can do like a mixture like the hot cocoa and just sprinkle that on there and real, like the real hot cocoa, like you can just sprinkle it on and then when it cures, um, it'll attach to that whipped cream and then it smells really good and, um, I've not had any issues with like it, um, like attracting bugs or anything like that. So it just depends on where you live. I'm in Ohio, so it just depends on where you're at. Um, but I have some from last year and have not had a problem. But anyway, I'm not going to do the cocoa powder. I am going to do like the chocolate drizzle. Um, once I, uh, once it cures, I'll add them or I'll add the, uh, I'm going to find my marshmallows and I'll add those. And then once it cures, I'll add, um, the, um, the, the chocolate drizzle on there. So if anybody has any questions, let me know. Um, and like I said, I will post, um, a supply list I'll push I'll put that separate for you guys so uh, you're welcome Elizabeth thank you I'm trying to take my gloves off without I want to reuse them because I didn't get them messed up so I was trying to take them off easily and they're not wanting to so I think I'll just take them off and then I can turn them back inside out so I'll just set them over here so I don't waste them so anyway um, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope if you guys make these that you will share them in the group and you can use like any um, kind of mugs um, I have another one that I made that's clear and um, it's still curing so once it's cured um, I'll take pictures and I'll show that too just to kind of show you the difference between if you use like a solid mug where you really can't see the hot cocoa or the hot chocolate in here and then um, what it looks like on like a clear mug so um, my mug is clear, but it's a holiday mug. So there's lots of like festive little Christmas scene around it. So anyway, I'll show you that as well too. So anyway, I hope that was helpful. And um, that's all I have for you guys tonight. So thanks for joining me. And um, I'm going to hop off of here and I'm going to head over on another half an hour to my other group. Um, to my private group. I do tutorials at 8 p.m. there, so I'm going to hop over there with them, and um, between now and then, I'm going to search for marshmallows. <laughs> so, okay, if you have any questions, please post them at the bottom of this video, and I will come back in, and I will read them, and I will answer them the best I can. Um, 
But yeah, other than that, I hope that you've had a good day so far and that uh, you have a good night and a good rest of your week. So I'm going to jump off and I will see you in the group. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Good night.